ready. <laughs> with uh, Donovan getting healthy again, was that the plan all along to have both him and Ronnie back on punts? Um, no, no, it wasn't. You know, Donovan was our returning starter, so uh, obviously when he got hurt, we went with Ronnie. Um, and then, you know, just uh, based on the fact that we're playing these spread rugby guys that can spray it all around the field, uh, we wanted to put the two returners back there. You know, um, obviously their punter had put the ball, you know, I think they pinned Iowa down there like seven times or something, so we didn't want that to happen to us. So we went with the two return look and it worked out really well. What kind of boost is it having Donovan available back? Oh, he's dynamic. He's elite back there. You know, he puts fear into to the opponent punt team. So it's a huge boost because now, you know, what we were facing was teams just catching the ball and getting it off. So you have no option of blocking a punt and, you know, they're getting it back there fast. Well, now it's, well, you got to start thinking about the op time a little bit. You don't want to get it back there that as fast because your gunners don't have a chance to cover. So um, it just allows us to do a lot more on our punt return and our punt block. How is the Quinn Moody double kicker rotation working for you? Right, I love it. Can you make sense of it? I mean, I know what Jim said, yeah, but. Make a lot of sense of it. They're <laughs> two starting kickers. And they're going to go, you know, whoever's drive it is going to kick. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's that, you know, people try to overcomplicate things. Why? It's not going to be situational, though? Like, you're thinking, nope. you're, you're, it's just going to be rotation. Kickers, yep. And the only thing that's happened is, uh, you know, Quinn has happened to be up on all the PATs and Moody has gotten the field goals. It's just how it worked out. That can change. But as of now, we have two starting kickers. Don't overcomplicate it. And whoever's drive it is will kick. Wouldn't you want to get Quinn in, though, to, to kick a field goal just to get – back into that rhythm maybe yeah he gets the rhythm every day in practice so <laughs> okay. um yeah he'll get you know he'll when when that when the opportunity arises when he's up he'll get the kick and um you know hopefully it stays like that forever because that means they're both making all their kicks so um yeah i just i don't think you just overcomplicate that mm -hmm. we just have two guys that you know there's been no separation in practice either if that starts happening then we think about it but there hasn't been you know they've been neck and neck equal competing um, making their kicks, doing a great job, being great teammates. So it's, you know, that's what that's how we're going to roll. Has that competition made each of them like up their game then this season so well, far? I would think so, yeah. you know, because they know, yeah, hey, there's another guy with me, right? Um, but, you know, I, I really, I, I like how they both handled it. They uh, they help each other. They feed off each other, you know, um, so it's it's been good, yeah. What's Zach's your dad's got a decent amount of playing time Saturday. How have you seen him progress in recent weeks? Uh, great, you know, I mean, it's, he's progressing like a freshman should, you know, just starting to understand and, um, and, and get comfortable, you know, in playing in the back end in our defense, which isn't an easy thing to do. Um, so he's progressed like he should, um, and uh, he'll, he'll hopefully keep progressing and, um, and keep playing. What was your reaction when he was able to get down the field there on that punt and, and made, laid a big hit? It's about time. <laughs> um, great job, you know, great play. Uh, you know, the, the week before he got down there and was a little tentative, and uh, you know, so now we got him to, to make that hit. So uh, we expect that's an expectation. You've seen him get down there in a hurry. Pretty much every special teams play. Is he your fastest guy on that unit? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the fastest guy on kickoff, on punt. Yeah, he's he's maybe the fastest guy on the team. Is there, is there any kind of challenge to like? What, you know, like you said, you, you've kind of waited to see him actually get that. Is there a challenge when it comes having that type of speed? Um, yeah, there's a challenge because obviously you can't be running that fast all the time and make a tackle if the guy sees you, right? He's going to sidestep you. So, um, you know, you, you got to understand when you can take a shot like that, when you can't take a shot like that, um, so you don't miss it and give a, a vertical seam and stuff like that. So, you know, that's all being coached, being put in those positions in practice and um, being able to adapt to it. Um, he was fortunate that he was in a great position to, to take a shot like that, and he did, which is great to see now because next time he's in it, he'll, he'll feel it and be able to do it again. It's, he's played a lot on third downs. What, what makes you comfortable putting him in those situations? He's, he's a great cover guy. You know, he's, uh, he's got, got elite coverage skills. Um, you know, um, his thing is, you know, just making sure we're training his eyes and he understands what route combinations could possibly be coming based on who he's defending, splits, all that stuff. Um, but he's he's getting he's getting there, so we felt comfortable. Hey, because of his coverage skills, and now because of his knowledge out there, 
putting him in. Do you foresee him getting more time at safety going forward? Um, I would hope so. He's a freshman. <laughs> if, if not, we got major issues. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, when that'll be, I don't know. You know, he's um, he's gonna play. Um, we're gonna you know get roles for him. Um, you know, so hopefully, hopefully the top two guys keep playing well. Um, hopefully Woods gets healthy and as a third guy in there, and then Daxton. So we got a we got a good little crew there, and we'll get them jobs and what their strengths are, and, and keep rolling with them. So, so was Saturday more of a result of Jamaric being out more than Daxton? Um, it was both. Jamaric was out, you know, he was working through something, but um, but it it, it was uh, it was both, you know. Uh, if Daxton wasn't ready, we would have went in a different direction. You said on the radio show last Monday with with Dax. You know, slow it down. You know, caution. Don't rush him in there. Do you, do you, do you feel differently now again after this past game that maybe he is ready for more? Yeah, of course. You know, um, again, I felt before the game that he was ready for more, mm -hmm. or we wouldn't have put him out there. You know, it's like it's funny. You got a freshman, you throw him out there, he gets burned for a touchdown. The same and people will be saying how much he sucks. <laughs> you know, so uh, the bottom line is we need to make sure that he's ready to not hurt the team, hurt himself, and go make plays out there. Um, he's in the back end. It's not like you can hide him, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, But going into the game, we felt comfortable. I wasn't nervous at all. I felt like he, the role that we were going to ask him to do, he was going to do and do it at a high level, and he did. So is Woods good to go this week? Um, he's still working through some yeah. stuff, but uh, we're hoping he was, he was out there moving around yesterday. So in Dax's development, what are you looking for from him to, to be comfortable in putting him out on the field? Um, what more in his development? You know, just getting comfortable. You know, just uh, just being able to um, to adjust to motion, to, to the things that people are doing against us, to uh, how how teams attack us, um, things of that nature. Just getting more and more comfortable. Um, but he's, you know, again, he's above and beyond what you would normally expect out of a freshman. You know, um, we're very very happy with him. Has he played some nickel too? Are those things kind of interchangeable, safety and, and nickel, or yeah, two different skill sets? They're, um, that's a good question. Actually, it, it's two different skill sets, but they're, uh, they're kind of our safety skill set, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's a bigger, more physical cover guy. Um, you know, Brad Hawkins played the nickel in the first couple games. Um, Josh can also do that. Um, Daxton would be another guy that can that can play that spot which we term the nickel but it's a you know it's a bigger physical cover guy how much is it with Dax or any freshman you kind of alluded to it already he was in a similar situation against Wisconsin but then this week he made that big hit on special teams yes how much is it making sure that they're they know what their mistakes are but that they're learning from them and not repeating them yeah, I mean, that's football. You know, great football players don't make the same mistake twice. You know, the elite ones. You know, they learn from, from whatever it is, um, and, and they fix it right away. Um, he was able to do that, which is huge. Uh, you know, obviously, um, it's, a, it's a very fluid game where there's a lot of things going on, so mistakes are going to happen. And, uh, you know, it's our job as coaches and then the players' job to adapt from anything that happens and, and get it fixed. Where do you draw your special teams ideas from, and how do you... Are you, are you able to assess the landscape? I mean, see other things around college football or even the NFL like, that you can implement even on a, during the season? Yeah, week to week? of course. Um, you know, we like to stay cutting edge on special teams. Um, we like to do some different things and not be traditional as much. Um, so we take um, all the top plays on special teams in college football and in the NFL and, uh, and cut it up. And I, you know, and I sit there and we'll watch it you know, on Mondays, um, see if we can draw anything. Um, Self-scout is big for us. It's like, hey, how are they going to attack? How many times have we done something like this, something like that? Um, you know, and then being able to adapt and change based on what we think we're going to be attacked. Um, but, like, yeah, we, we try to stay dynamic, cutting edge, and, um, and change up what we can, but still stay in our foundation of, of our scheme. How much is that a thing where you can get a significant advantage um, based off of an innovative scheme? Because, I mean, it is kind of... You know, they talk about it's the third phase, but it's also sometimes neglected by, you know, teams where they're not maybe yeah. focused as much on that say, offense and defense. Yeah, a very true. Um, we feel that we can take a huge advantage of it. Um, we feel that, you know, by changing, especially teams that stay traditional, by changing, um, they're going to do the same thing. And by us changing, we can take advantage of, of what they're doing um, or force the preparation force their hand in preparation more because you only have a small lot of time in special teams a week. So if we can force the preparation over here, maybe we can take advantage over here. Um, 
So that's a lot of what we do as well. What kind of charge do you get when you see a player like uh, Cochran make that play on a set? I mean, incredible. It's, I mean, what else can you ask for as a coach, you know? A guy who obviously has walked on here and, and worked his butt off on scout teams and, and found a niche, right? Well, how am I going to help this football team if you're Tyler Cochran? Well, he found out it's kickoff, okay? Well, then he just worked at it and worked at it and worked at it, and then to him to be able to go down and make a huge play like that, you're just you're proud, you're happy, um, you're, you're gratified that he was able to find that niche. And now you're like, how many other guys can I get give that opportunity on, you know, and then can seize that opportunity. Do you see a different motivation sometimes with the uh, sons of guys who played here and, and maybe guys who aren't big contributors? I mean, yeah. he's obviously on kickoff, but not an Aiden who's, who's starting. But do you see something different that they want to do something that their fathers did? You know, play oh, for oh, of probably? course. I think it's just that's human nature, right? You know, guys that chose to come here and their fathers had played here, they're going to they're gonna want to succeed and, and, and make the family proud, you know, not just make the team proud, right? So. You know, I think that's 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 definitely evident. What have you seen from Giles in the kick return? He's explosive. You know, he's uh, he's explosive. He's natural in terms of his ability to get to the ball. Um, you know, really, really gives us a weapon back there, uh, mm -hmm. which we feel like we'll be able to take advantage of throughout the season. And what went into the decision to start, you know, a true freshman at kick returner right away? Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my loss of hair. Um, <laughs> no, uh, it's really just, you know, trusting, you know, the other coaches. Uh, you know, we kind of get together, Jay and I, and, you know, and, and talk and, and he took a lot of reps, you know, in the fall camp to uh, to be able to do that and in the competition. And then, you know, you just make sure that he can handle catching the ball first and getting as many yards in the ball security first. And then you hope the explosive takes over there. Um, but he's a guy who's been able to handle that. And, uh, and so we went with it. You said after the Ohio State game, mouth bloodied. What was a similar response after the Wisconsin game defensively? Um, yeah, you know, I think, I think, you know, in that situation, you got to you gotta pick yourself up off the floor immediately. You got to look in the mirror and you got to say, what, what could we do better? What could we all do better? Um, you know, from, from myself to every player and, you know, you got to just attack from that moment on. Because if you don't attack, you're going to keep getting knocked back. Um, and I give credit to our coaches and, you know, Jim, I mean, unbelievable how he handled the team and the coaches. That week, it was like a clinic. I, I felt, you know, and I told him as a coach, this, you know, because those guys, we got up and we attacked the team and we were ready because we know who we are in here and we know we got knocked backwards and uh, there's going to be some self-doubt, right? And and you're going to start thinking, but if you just look in the mirror and you say, you know, this isn't going to be who, how this, I'm defined, you know, as an individual, as a team, and you get after it, you know, um, then the result will be what happened. You know, and then we just got to continue to make sure that we remember and learn from that game moving forward. And we got to prepare like we prepared last week. And we got to feel like we felt Monday, even though you're coming off a win. It's got to be the same, um, you know, focus and determination and, and, and attention to detail and everything. You just got to move forward. What do, you, what do you mean by clinic? You know, I just think like everybody responded. Every single person in this building responded. You know, and that's not common when you get beat like that in a game. That's just what I saw, you know, as an individual. I saw every single person respond um, and put it on themselves and, and take it and then work to improve themselves a little bit. And I think every single person in this building last week improved a little bit. And that is very uncommon coming off a of loss. That's what you mentioned. You mentioned how good Brad and Josh have been. Um, is there anything you've done to try to challenge them to even go to another level or more that you want to see from those two, especially? <laughs> Josh and Brad? Yeah. <laughs> you got to ask them that question. <laughs> uh, I think every second I try to challenge those guys. Uh, they walked in the meeting yesterday and I started screaming for about an hour straight. <laughs> 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 so uh, I, I think that's my job, yeah. So um, the way to challenge them is, is always is just knowing what's coming, when it's coming, understanding the defensive scheme, how the offense is attacking us, and then bring it with physicality. You know, don't 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 wait for it. Go attack it. Bring it with physicality on a, on a daily basis. I think that's how they can they can both imp keep improving. What's your evaluation of Iowa's quarterback? Of what? Iowa's quarterback. Oh man, um, I think he's like the third leading passer in Iowa history. Strong arm, big. Um, 
good, good in the pocket, good with movement, can make all the throws, great leader. Um, the offense runs through him. You know, this is a great challenge for us. Okay, we're going to keep 